Welcome to our 2022 Wildwood 240BHXL. Starting right in your back bumper here for each end. Pull that cap out of there. Inside of the back bumper, you're gonna find your sewer hose. Take note of those two ears and the adapter here. It's helping be hooking it up to your sewer system. And the hose itself, once fully extended, is about 20 feet long. Just keeping it stored in the bumper back here to help keep any sort of stench out of the unit. Keep things that bit fresher, that bit cleaner. That cap just presses into place. Right around the corner from there, you'll find your hot water tank. That keyway there, you line that up and then you can pop it on open. Your controls for turning it on with propane are just inside of the unit. For electricity, you just get the little switch down there, flip it on, fires it up. Before turning it on with either source, we just want to hit this relief valve right there. If the tank were full, you'd get some water coming out. If you're not getting any water out, there is a chance that it's empty. So at that point, just making sure that your water is all turned on, making sure this guy's full before firing it up. Once you're done, just lining up those two bottom posts, lock it into place. Right beside that, you get your exterior shower. So you'll get a key just like this guy here. Just stick it on into there and open her up. Hot and cold water, about a three foot hose, standard head. So if the dog's out getting muddy, you can spray them off before he gets inside. Once you're done, just tucking that hose back in there and the head underneath the handles. Right underneath your shower is your sewer system. So this cap here, if you kind of press on it and give it a turn, you can pop it out of there. You see it's got the same ears on it that the sewer hose had. It'll attach the same way. Once you have it attached, right in the back here, you have a black valve. Black valve is controlling your black tank. Black tank is filled from your toilet. Of course, it's going to be your dirtiest water, so we'll dump that first. Once that's done, you can then come to your wastewater. Wastewater is going to be filled from your bathroom sink as well as your shower. Typically, you're going to be a bit cleaner than that, so we'll dump that second. Lastly, is going to be your galley tank. A galley tank is filled just from your kitchen sink, so that's typically your cleanest water. We dump that last to help keep that sewer hose as clean as possible. Up from there, we get your power inlet. So as you pop that open, you'll find a little notch in the bottom corner. It's going to line up with that notch there. Press those in together. So it'll eighth turn to lock it down. Then you get the thread collar to lock it into place. Following the cord back, standard 30 amp end there. Most campsites have that. You can plug straight on in and you're good to go. We do also provide you with a 15 amp adapter. So if you're looking to plug in at home to charge your batteries or run your fridge, you got the power to do so. Right here, as well as behind the other axle and in the two front corners, you've got stabilizer jacks. All they do is they come down, contact the ground, give it another turn or so just to firm it up, and that'll get rid of any sort of bounce or sway that you see you got in the unit right now. Just keep things firm while you're out camping. Additional to that, you've got that JT strong arm. So you just have this little T latch there. You're just going to loosen that off. Just allows the two poles to telescope inside of each other. Once you have your stab jack down and set in place, you are done tighten that off and it just prevents any sort of forward and back movement. Coming towards the front of the unit, you get your one end of your storage compartment here. Flip that open, magnetic latch holds it for you. Inside of here, you'll find your water hose. Inside of the water hose is your park adapter. So your 30 amp cord into there, 15 to a standard outlet. Right underneath here, we've got your front stabilizer jack. The only difference here being that your JT strong arm goes towards the front and center of the unit. As we come up front, you'll find your battery disconnect switch here. So with that pointed up, that's it turned on. If you're gonna turn it off and bring it out, that's your battery then disconnected. The battery itself is housed inside of this box right here. As long as you're plugged in through that short cord in the back, or you seven pinch your tow vehicle, that battery's charging for you. These two knobs, if you loosen them off and open them up, you get access to your propane tanks. It's basically just opening up the one tank. They are just teed into one regulator, so they'll just kind of run together. So you're gonna run off of the one. Once things stop working, you'll close that off, go get that tank filled up, and run off of the other one. In front is the power tongue jack. So you have your light switch on top. Up is up, down is down. Other end of your storage compartments here. It's a little laundry hamper right here. It's kind of accessible from your inside bedroom. And you also have your, so this rod right here is gonna be for running all of your JT strong arms. Then you have your manual overhead for the tongue jack up front and a three quarter inch driver for all your stabilizer jacks. This surface right here is dry erase. So if you wanted to get yourself some dry erase markers, you can make, leave yourself your notes there. Fresh water inlet right up here, pop that cap out and your water hose will stick into there, turn on the water and that'll fill up your fresh water tank. You know that tank is full once it starts spitting water out of that vent there. Drain for that tank's right underneath here. You get this white valve, pull that over, drains itself out, simple as that. This compartment here as we open it up, magnetic latch again on the right side there, you get access to your kind of outside kitchen. You have your 120 volt fridge here, as long as you're plugged in, this guy's going for you. Inside of the fridge, you're gonna find this water hose. Take note of those two gears there. Flip this guy open, you get your ears kind of at your 11 and five o'clock positions. Press those in, little eighth turn to lock it down. Then you have your water hose tapped into your cold water system. All your different settings there at the garden hose end. Once you're done, just kind of press on it, bring it out and that'll do it. Once you're done, you do just kind of want to extend it out. Just allow it to drain itself out. Just because of course you don't want to be storing that water. 
once you're done, just tucking it back away. Inside it, you got your griddle, just like I just slides on out. Your propane hose here, it's that collar, you just push, pull that back and you can undo it. Right in the back here, you can attach. Same thing, pull the collar back, attach to that hose. And then underneath the unit, right by your freshwater drain, you get the same sort of quick connect. You push that collar back, attach your hose. Once you have it attached, you have this valve here. You're gonna open that up. With that valve open, you cannot undo that quick connect collar. So it's just kind of an added safety. For the griddle now, you're gonna press that knob in. I'm just kind of rapidly turning it past the light. And just as it clears all the air out of the propane line, you can see it then fires up. Once you're done, just turning it off, letting it cool down, closing off the flow of propane, pull that hose out of there. Get the hose out of the back here. And then I just like to attach the hose to itself, just ensures that nothing's getting inside of there and soaring it all back away. Cable and satellite outlet there. So if you're looking to have TV outside, you can. Power outlet for it there as well. Exhaust for your furnace. If you're ever running a furnace, you just want to make sure it's not blocked off. It does get hot. Up from there, you'll find your stove vent. It's a little flap in here. Put that on open. Just allows your fan inside to evacuate any sort of fumes from your stove. Once you're done, just pressing it into place until it clicks. That'll prevent any sort of dust from kicking up in there. You see your two exterior speakers there as well. And then to the back here, this door is just coming into your back bathroom. And then in the back of the unit, you get your spare tire, cable and satellite inlet. Okay, that's a little stick. So coax cables plug into their respective ports and fire up at your TV location. Right underneath you have your cable, sorry, your city water connection. Your water hose will plug into there, turn on the water and that'll pressurize the lines throughout the unit. Underneath it is a black tank flush. So you may notice over time after having gone and dumped your black tank, your monitor panel is still reading a third or two thirds, whatever it may be. Typically it's just some debris inside of the tank hanging between the probes. So what you'll do is just take your water hose and plug it into here, open up your black tank and turn on the water and that'll flush out that tank, get rid of any sort of debris that could be causing that issue. And lastly, straight up, you'll see your pre wire bump for a rear view or observation camera. So now we'll make our way inside of the unit. Your assist handle just up 90 degrees and it falls into place. Then we can open up the door. The door is on a friction hinge, so it just kind of sits wherever you leave it. Your steps here, you're going to pull that blue handle in towards the side, and you can pull them on out. That little tab there, if you push that in, you can extend or retract your legs just based on your campsite needs. As you come inside, first things first, right on the left there, you've got your fire extinguisher. That's standard, pull the pin, point, and shoot. This dimmer here, if we just touch that, turns on all of your interior lights. If we press and hold, they'll dim down. Continue holding, they dim back up. Release at any point to choose that level of lighting. Light switch on the right there, does an accent light above your slide. Light switch on the left, does your awning light outside, as well as your speaker lights. Awning itself is on this left switch. Press and hold the bottom of it, and it'll make its way out. Once that awning's fully extended, we're going to see a little white flap come down as well as the black of the metal tube. Once you see that, you're going to stop. If you were to continue extending, it can actually wind itself up backwards, in which case your fabric will be underneath the tube, allowing it to then hold water, accelerating the growth of mold and mildew. So I don't think we'll quite make it all the way out today. You can just kind of see the start of that flap there. Right. Now if it were to start raining, it's of course going to hold some water. So what you can do is grab either arm, front or rear, and you're just going to pull straight down on it. And you can see that changes the pitch of the awning out at the head, allowing water to then run off. Now if you like that angle better, because it does give you more shade, you can do the same thing with the arm up front. Before you bring it back in though, you just want to make sure these arms are back out straight and fully extended, just so you're not running the risk of bending them. Then we can press and hold the top of that switch. The awning will make its way back in. Again, you'd just be watching to make sure that your fabric's over top of the tube. And another thing to keep in mind with your awning is it does catch a lot of wind. So once you get up to about 15, 20 kilometers an hour want of wind, if you want to bring it back in, again, just so you're not running the risk of bending your arms. Slide out switches on the one on the right here. You press and hold the top of that and the slide will make its way out. Once that slide's fully extended, we'll just kind of hear the motors whine a little bit and then they'll turn themselves off automatically. Mm -hmm. 
Red switch on the left there is your water pump. So as you turn that on, it turns on your water pump, drawing out of your fresh tank to pressurize your lines. Water heater's beside it. So you turn that switch on, you get that little red light up there, letting you know the ignition sequence will start. Once that sequence is started, that light's gonna go out. It's gonna try that three times. If after the third try, it doesn't fire up, this light's gonna come on and stay on. At that point, just off, back on to reset it. Stood right here, you can hear the click of the igniter and the whir of the flame. We know the tank is good. So monitor systems up top here. So we have battery on the left. So you can see we're currently C for charging. D would be good, F is fair, L is low. Your fresh tank, as you fill that up, will go to a third, two thirds and full. Same idea for your black, your gray, and your galley. Up top here, you can see our pre-wired for solar. So if you had to choose to go that route, your charge controller is getting installed right there. Behind us, we have the door into your bedroom. So right through there, you find your light switch up on the wall. The blinds throughout the unit, just a slow rise. They just kind of sit wherever you leave them, snap them and they run back up. Outside you have that hamper. Here is access to that hamper from inside. And you also have your little closet space here. You do have CPAP access as well. So you do have the little power outlets there for a CPAP machine. If you pick up the foot of your bed, you do get access to a little storage compartment there. Right up on this wall here is your TV backer. So if you're looking around the TV in the bedroom, it's going right there. Power outlet for it, as well as your cable and satellite outlet. Same sort of closet space here with the power outlet, as well as that CPAP. Emergency exit behind me here. So you're just pulling this red tab to get rid of the screen. Take this handle here, throw it outside, pop on out. Across your entertainment area. You've of course got the TV backer right there. You run all your cables right down through there to your power outlet on the left side. Antenna outlet right in the middle here. That green light there is just letting you know that antenna is turned on. A little button there for beside it, turning it on and off. Cable and satellite outlet up top. And then you're also pre-wired for Wi-Fi. Stereo is pretty straightforward there. Power button turns it on. Mode, you can cycle through all your different modes. Select to get you all of your settings. Volume controls there on the side. Zone one is the sound bar itself. Zone two is your outside set of speakers. You get the storage on either side, just wide open. And then your fireplace down low, and you get your power button on the right. That bottom, sorry, the back illumination color is center right. In the center is your bottom illumination. Center left, you've got your temp, low and high. Then on the left, you have a timer, 30 minutes up to nine hours. Fire button, then you turn it back off. Pantry space in the slide out here. And then also your dinette. So you get your light right up top. You can see we've currently got it set up as the dinette. If you're gonna take this table here and wiggle it up and out of its legs, the table will then sit down onto the three ledges there. We'll take your two cushions there and the two cushions there, I believe, to fill in the center and create your bed. Some storage underneath here as well. In the kitchen, you get your hot and cold water here, of course. You also get the holding sink cover, dual basin sink. Some storage down underneath, just be mindful of all the drains and water lines there. The drawer space here as well. There's a little light up here, just on its own center push button. And you also get your storage up here. In there, you're going to find that binder. The binder's got all of your owner's manuals in it, any remotes, any keys, anything like that, you're going to find right in there. Microwave, pretty straightforward, just like home. Down underneath, it's your range vent, so you get your light as well as your fan. This is that fan that you want turned on with that flap outside opened up. The bifold cover just flips on back, sits in place. Turn that knob over to high, hit it with the sparker, which fires right up. Once you're done, just turning them all off, letting it cool down, closing the cover. For the oven, you open it up, turn that guy over to that little flame there, hit it with the sparker, and it just clears the air out of that line, get that pilot light going. Once you have that pilot light going, you just hold the knob for another few seconds and you can release and the flame will hold itself. Turn up to your desired temperature and she fires right up. Again, once you're done, just turn it back down to pilot. But if you're leaving the unit for a while, you just want to make sure it's right off. Button on the right there does all your lights. 12 volt fridge here. So as long as you're plugged in with your batteries charged or charging, this guy's going for you. Temp selection right in the back there. Turn for your furnace right down underneath, so just kind of making sure that's not blocked off. Up on the walls, your thermostat, get that bottom bar there to wake it up. It's first going to come into your fan speed. Low and high, of course, just moving some air around. A cool high at this point, it's going to be that high fan all the time, cooling in and out as needed. Same idea here, just the low fan all the time. Cool low autos, or it becomes an on demand system, so now the compressor and the fan will kind of cut in and out as needed, but it's only going to use the low fan. Same idea here, but now it's going to use the high fan. 
with the air conditioner going, you've got two different options. You can have these two louvers here closed, in which case you'd be using all of our ceiling ducting to move the air. Or you can open them up and it'll just dump all of its air into the living area here. So when you first go out to your campsite, you want those open, cool off this area as quickly as possible, then close them off and start moving the air throughout. After cool high auto, if you hit the bar again, it'll come down into heat. It'll turn off the air conditioner, turn on the furnace. The furnace is moving its air through all of our little black portals there. Temp selection at any point, just the arrows there. And you hit that bar again after heat, and it'll come down into off and just turn everything off. Into the bathroom here. This is where you'll find that rear entrance. Your light switch is right up on the wall there. Medicine cabinet here just opens on up. You get this little elastic there, sits into this tongue here, just as your travel latch. GFI protected outlet underneath, test on the bottom, preset on top, hot and cold water course, and again, just the storage space that you're being mindful of your drains and your water lines with. The toilet here flips on open, you get your flusher on the right side. Into the shower, you get your standard head and hose with the sliding door here. So it does magnetically latch both shut and open. Above our head, we've got your roof vent. You just turn that knob to open it up. Back corner, you get the switch, turn on the fan. Your bunk spaces, so they just got their own little lights there, just on their own center push buttons, both identical spaces. Underneath it, in your little doghouse storage here, you've got your converter, press it top and center, it'll pop on open. You get all of your breakers in the middle here. Whenever a breaker breaks, it sits in the center, so just turn it off and then back on to reset it, and all of your fuses are on the right side here. Whenever a fuse pops, you'll get a little red LED right beside it, letting you know exactly which one went. Around the corner is your LP detector, propane's heavier than air, it sits on the floor. That guy detects it and starts going off just like a smoke detector would. And your smoke detector is kind of right by your sink here. As simple as that. So that's about it for this unit. If you've got any other questions on it, please feel free to give us a call 204-237-7272.